Hi everyone! Welcome to Susie Cube Women. Official. I very quickly wanted to show you my Ramones t shirt that was from Matalan and it was £10. And this is in extra, 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 extra large. They only, they only had small or medium. And yeah, I thought it was rather unusual because it doesn't have the band name, men, blah, 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 you know, the band members' names on the eagle. Yeah, and you know, so there you go. <laughs> and it is an actual official licensed Ramon t shirt. There you go. It even has my name on it. <laughs> yes. Uh, I've been practicing my autograph. <laughs> yes. And actually, when I went out today, I had to avoid, you know, the big bombardment of paparazzi. <laughs> yes. Anyway, today I'm playing the Rolling Stones. So it's cute. And there was a reason for this. If you stay tuned to the end of the video. Okay. <laughs> yes, the other day I mentioned I'm kind of like a modern day Paulie Yates. You know, kids are today are probably wondering, who is this Paulie Yates? You know. So I thought I would sort of recite my Tumblr blog. Okay, you know, Polly H was one of my idols. I kind of aspired to her. Um, yeah, I know, look what happened to her. <laughs> but yeah, you know, this is called Susie Q in a parallel universe. As I said, you know, I see a lot of aspects of myself in her. Not obviously not in the whole sort of of a very she did have a kind of at the end quite tragic. You know, ending to a lot and um, yeah I just loved her so this is it you know I thought I would do it this way rather than you know sitting here for half an hour um, kind of reciting obviously from memory you know all the information usually start rambling sort of sort of indirectly and irrelevantly really <laughs> you know so um, yeah so maybe this will work out a little bit better you know this week I'm going to a few vlogs coming along Obviously, I mentioned Tara Zara, you know. So later on, you know, I'm very busy now. <laughs> okay, so this is it, Paulie Yates, Susie Q in the parallel universe. This is kind of like my office here, as you can see. I'm like a secretary today. <laughs> okay, anyway, are you ready for this? <laughs> I loved Paulie Yates and followed her short-lived career as a TV presenter. She was also a very successful author and began her career as a rock music journalist, just like me. She got a big breakthrough with a very iconic music programme between the years 1982 and 1987, co-hosting with Jules Holland named The Tube. This is where contemporary bands would showcase. The Tube was a very important outlet for performers and became a turning point in their careers. This show was a launch pad for very big successful careers in television for both presenters Jules Holland and Paulie Eds. Paula went on to present another big TV programme again for Channel 4 entitled The Big Breakfast and became well known for her notorious interviews on The Big Breakfast Bed. This programme was produced by her then husband Bob Geldof of The Boomtown Rats. In her early days of rock and roll, Paula was a big fan of The Boomtown Rats and was a self-confessed groupie. Paula and Bob married in Las Vegas in 1986, in brackets. That's where I'm going to get married also, one day, exclamation mark. I don't know why I said that. Maybe because it's true. Paulie Yates met a guy called Michael Hutchins of In Excess when she interviewed him on the Tube. She declared she was going to get that man. Over the course of nine years, she followed the band around, like the groupie she was. Paula interviewed Hutchins again, this time on The Big Breakfast, and the fair was already underway by this time. Paula divorced Bob in 1986 and had a daughter, Tiger Lee, with Michael. She also had three daughters with Bob. And there were some photos there of Paulie Yates and Jules Holland. And obviously if you go on to Tumblr and you click on the photos, you get the enlargements. On the 22nd of November 1997, Hutchins committed suicide in a hotel room in Sydney. Paulie Yates was distraught and never fully recovered from the devastating circumstances that surrounded his death. Paula ended up having a nervous breakdown and went on a downhill spiral that ended in her untimely death on the 17th of September 2000, which coincidentally is also the birthday of her daughter, Pixie. This is Paula with her baby, Tiger Lily, in Sydney, Australia, see below. And there's a little photo there of Paula 
on a boat on the river you can actually see Sydney Opera House in the background I thought it was rather sad photo and sort of captures the spirit of Paul Yates at that time okay it's very tragic when a star gets sucked into an underworld of sex drugs and rock and roll and Paula was no exception Paula died alone in her London home from an accidental heroin overdose that a coroner ruled as not suicide but as foolish and incautious behaviour. She was 41 years old. I loved her for her attitude, her image, her charisma, her bleached platinum blonde hair, what she stood for and everything she did for the music industry and TV. May she rest in peace and I'm sure she's up there with Michael, just as Nancy is with Sid. Susie Q. Ramone, official. And actually mentioning Sid and Nancy, there's, you've probably seen it or never heard of it, I don't know. A movie called Sid and Nancy and it's a real, you know, it's a tearjerker. Every time, don't matter how many times I watch it, you know, the ending gets me every time. You know, when Sid um, gets into the cab at the end of the movie and Nancy's sitting there in a wedding dress. It is. <laughs> oh, it's one of my favourite movies of all time, Sid and Nancy. So that could be another blog, vlog kind of thing one day. Who knows? Anything's possible with Susie Q. Okay then. So, actually I feel like that girl from Scooby-Doo with my glasses on. So I'm going to remove them. And go back. Hi, it's me. Not very often you see me. I like to hide behind these. Um, the reason being, actually, because I look cool. <laughs> obviously and also because I never look at the camera I always look at the viewfinder so I end up looking rather strange more stranger anyway than usual <laughs> so yeah that's the reason as I said apart from being totally totally utterly and utterly awesome yes <laughs> and actually one of my friends says I really rock shades which I thought was nice thank you dandelion April that was nice. I wanted to actually mention another one of my friends from YouTube, another YouTuber called Music Through the Veins. You know, thank you for sending me those really nice messages. It's really helped me along. And, you know, it's really nice when you connect with people on YouTube and you can talk to one another. You know, it's, it's a really nice little community. Actually, I love YouTube. <laughs> and, um, okay then, guys, as I was mentioning Paula Yates, as I said, I'm kind of like a Paula Yates. You know, I've sort of gone into interviewing rock stars. Um, something I've always wanted to do. And, you know, as I said, I could be like Paul Yates interviewing these rock stars on like a big bed. You know, I could even get in bed with them. <laughs> Joke. <laughs> Don't take me seriously. Come on. <laughs> well, not everything I say, you know. So, yeah. So, I'm just kind of wondering, you know, who's going to be fortunate to be my next victim? Obviously... John Skelton of T-Rex is going to be a very hard act to follow, let's face it. It's not my biggest achievement, actually, though, because I've met the Ramones, so so he's second. <laughs> but that's still pretty good, you know. It was an honour, you know, for him to be interviewed by Susie Q. Ramone. <laughs> and as I said, um, I've sort of set in my heights, I've got the sights set, so to say, you know, another rock star. Um... It's quite famous. Um, a lot of my idols, actually, and icons aren't around anymore, so it'd be kind of difficult to interview them. But this one, actually, you know, when I was interviewing a lot of the T Rex T fans, they all, you know, the younger generation was saying they got into T Rex, obviously, T Rex to see through the parents, you know, mainly the dads. And this is what happened to me when I was younger. Um, this band, I absolutely love them. And um, it must be probably the most famous band to come out of post-war Britain. And they are obviously the Beatles. Who I'm going to sing? Those in the singing voice too. The Beatles. I just love them. You know, obviously John Lennon. You know, he's not around anymore, but I absolutely love John Lennon. Everything he did, you know, for the music industry is also just phenomenal. And so the next best person, obviously. I could say Ringo Starr, but yeah, he's okay. But, um... It's got to be Paul McCartney, you know. I've always, it's on my vision board. Um, as you know, I believe in cosmic ordering. It's very strange. I talk about it sometimes. Um, Noel Edmonds um, actually is also a big advocate for cosmic ordering. It's amazing. It really changes your life and your perspective, actually. 
on um, life as a whole and the universe, the power of the universe. And yeah, I've got Paul McCartney on my vision board. I've got a lot of things on there. <laughs> uh, yeah, so anyway, enough about that. So yes, um, you know, the stars are just queuing up to be interviewed by me, the queue, <laughs> you know. Um, they do try to actually run away from me, but um, yeah, there's just no escape from the queue. <laughs> Ask John Scott. <laughs> You know, under duress, I sort of, in the end, had to relieve him <laughs> of the interview. So, yeah, yeah. anyway, <laughs> it sounds rather strange, doesn't it? But, yes, anyway, it was, as I said, it was a brilliant achievement for me, and it's really helped my viewing figures, actually, on YouTube. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so, obviously, you know, it's not as if he's ever going to watch this. <laughs> yeah, but uh, imagine if he did, I could never share my base in a kind of a TV ecstasy concert ever again. You know, most YouTube page actually on my Facebook page looks like a mini shrine to John Scott. <laughs> and um, actually as a music journalist obviously it's my job to stalk. Sorry, maybe a strong word, research <laughs> yeah, these stars and I found out quite a lot about John Scott and you know, didn't tell me everything. So I'm going to make an extra sort of video vlog about this when I get to, I've got so much in the pipeline, as I said, you know, <laughs> everybody wants a piece of Susie Q. Okay, you know, to be honest with you, being a wag, you know, isn't what it's cracked up to be, really isn't. Um, as I can recall, actually, um, in the, in the, uh, back in the day, when I used to hang out with Mick Jagger, and uh, yeah, you know, I didn't love him for his mansion or my designer wardrobe or the Porsche that he bought me or the, or you know, we travelled the world, you know, I've been everywhere with, you know, touring with the Rolling Stones. Yeah, but it all went pear shaped when that Jerry, what's her face, came along. You know, she screwed it up totally. And all I was left with, you know, was a bag for life. There it is beyond me. <laughs> You know, but I can prove it because the Rolling Stones, as I just mentioned, wrote a song about me called Susie Q in 1965. Yeah, so there you go, believe what you want to believe. I know you probably think I elaborate and like to brag, but yeah, there you go. <laughs> so yeah, it was, you know, it was just totally fabulous. <laughs> so, you know, girls, just um, obviously you want to be a wag wife or girlfriend of a rock star. You know, you've got to take on board. You've got to be a kind of sort of type of person. You know, obviously they do a lot of touring and, you know, they're dedicated to the job. So, you know, you either got to go touring with them, travelling around the country, the world even, you know, or you stay at home, counting all the dollars. <laughs> you know, so you've got to be sort of very level-headed and grounded and not get carried away with the rock and roll lifestyle, you know. So, yeah. As I said, you know, that's about it for today anyway, and I, um, <laughs> I'll catch you later, dudes. And um, thanks for watching me, Susie Q. I've still actually got my two weeks to see sort of concert ticket here. And if I'd known how famous John Scarlton was, <laughs> he's, should I say, um, I could have gotten to autograph it. <laughs> maybe next time, maybe we could do a part two. Uh, huh. I'll be more prepared next time with the questions. And stump him even more. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so yes, obviously, I'm just waiting for this sort of Paul McCartney to come into fruition, and uh, all the rest of them. You know, as I said, they were going to be lucky enough to be interviewed by me. So I'm going now. So bye. <laughs> A chapter. Susie Q. Susie Q.